Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to a new video where this is actually very exciting. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this for a very long time and we officially have Final Cut Pro on the iPad. Now, I have been a video creator and editor for the past 14 years. I went from iMovie to using Final Cut. So I've used Final Cut for the past decade. Now something I haven't used that much is an iPad. The last iPad I owned was back in the day when you needed it to fly drones. Uh, and since then, I just haven't had one. So Apple reached out and asked if I wanted to uh, borrow one for a review unit to test out Final Cut Pro. And I said, absolutely I do. So here we are. I edit everything from my MacBook Pro. So I thought coming from the MacBook to the iPad would be very similar. Boy oh boy, was I wrong. Anyway, it's definitely a huge learning curve and I am still 100% getting to know Final Cut for iPad, but I just thought that we could kind of walk through it and talk about it. This is Final Cut for iPad. It is subscription based, so it's gonna be $4.99 or $49 annually. And this is the vlog that I have been working on. I do like that you can use the Apple Pencil with it. So, you know, we've got a lot of touch action here. And I was talking to my sister, Justine. I was like, Justine, this is very difficult for me. And she said, you just have to get used to the touch. When in doubt, you have to just touch it. Anyway, we got our project here. We have our timeline. So this obviously is giving it a whole new touch interface. So you can even record and edit and do everything here. It also does have the Apple ProRes built in. So this is gonna be compatible with anything that has an M1 or M2 chip for the iPad. You can also do a lot of things with HDR. This also is really great because it does have a lot of like built in graphics as well as effects, which is really nice. So we have some effects and transitions and titles and backgrounds and objects and soundtracks. So it makes it like really easy to, you know, use that and just kind of add it into your content. We also have this little jog wheel right here, which is really, really convenient. And I have to say at first, I didn't like it, but now I'm actually getting into it, which is kind of fun. We also do have this option where you can hover. So I'm not even touching the screen, but I'm just like hovering over my content, which is pretty cool. So let's talk a little bit about Multicam. This is something that I use a lot when it comes to unboxings and it's actually very, very easy to use. So let's do a new Multicam. These are are the two clips that I want to use. I hit next. You can adjust the settings. I'm going to do, uh, yeah, this all looks pretty good. So do 24 and hit create. And for this clip, this is the clip where I want to use the audio. So I'm going to select play this angle's audio even when the video is not being used. Uh, this is where I'm going to do the color adjustment again and I will adjust accordingly to the one clip. And of course I can do it for the other clip as well. This is where I would zoom in a little so that we have that product shot. So as you can see here, this is great. It's showing you where the audio is coming from. So it's coming from the first clip, which is what I want. Now editing this is pretty interesting. There are a bunch of different ways that you can do it. But this was something that I found fascinating. Watch this. Switch and All I did was tap, tap, and it's making these super quick edits cutting in between the multi-clips, which is pretty convenient and pretty amazing. There's also a really cool feature where you can do a scene removal mask. So you can basically separate a subject from the background without a green screen. The effects, we're gonna go back to masks and keying and we're gonna do the screen removal mask. So it did like a decent job. Let's throw in a prism underneath of it. Look at me. <laughs> It's like I'm in, what was that show, Reading Rainbow? You guys get the point, but that technology is pretty cool. This definitely could use um, some help with, uh, with uh, fine tuning it. But the fact that you can do this cool stuff like without the green screen is actually pretty cool. Another cool feature that we have is voice isolation. Audio is very important, at least to me, when it comes to like my content. So over here, we're gonna hit voice isolation. And let's hear. Outlets. Um, I have like 120. I have like 120 miles left, but like I'm scared that once I get there, there's not gonna be anywhere to charge, and I have a little bit of range anxiety. It's my first road trip, so I stopped here to get a little juice. Actually, very impressed. That was just me literally hitting it on, um, but it worked very well. And of course we do have the built-in pro mode. There are a lot of times where I need to do some pickup shots and I'm like, oh, I have to get my camera and then I have to transfer the footage and I have to do all of this. If I am editing on my iPad, I can just easily open up the camera and I can shoot the footage in the camera, which will then just go right into my final cut. So then you don't necessarily have to, you know, get the dongle and upload the footage from the camera and you could just skip all that, record directly, 
from the iPad and have it all there. And that kind of brings me back to how I've been getting my footage here. Um, basically, I was just using a dongle, a USB-C adapter, plugging in my SD card, and then importing my footage that way the same way that I do to my MacBook. Except now that there's a built-in SD card on my MacBook, I don't need the dongle, but I needed the dongle for previous MacBooks, so I have the dongle now for the iPad. It's a whole, it's a whole dongle thing, a sensitive subject. There's also a feature where you can do live effects, so I'm gonna use my Apple Pencil, but you can also use your hand, and you can draw different things. So this is the beginning of the video, and I'm gonna write road trip time. Hit done. Hey guys, so today we're gonna Road go trip time. Another thing that makes this cool is we have dynamic titles and transitions. So you're able to customize your videos how you want, obviously, and there's all these different types of options like lower thirds, there's bumpers, there's transitions, and it's just easy to access them and easy to use. So once again, you don't necessarily have to be professional or really know how to use these things in depth because it's all built in. There's also a lot of effects that you can use. You could do things, you know, like add color grading presets, masks, blurs, we can, you know, toss in this transition. We can really do anything we want, which is pretty exciting. I love a good cross dissolve, so maybe we start the video with that. And there's also built in music, which is actually something that I was very impressed when I heard about this. So with the soundtracks, you can select from 45 soundtracks as of now. So we've added Swaggy Day to the timeline, okay? And this is what's really cool because this is a part of the kind of dynamic soundtrack. So as you can see, my video is not over. So by hitting the animate button right here, that is when you can kind of dynamically adjust and you can make it so that it just flows to be as long as your video or as long as you need it. I love having this pencil. I'm just flinging it around. Anyway, I use a lot of third party um, transitions and stuff like that from Motion VFX. So in the future, I do believe that will be coming to iPad. Uh, but as of now, we kind of just have everything that's built in. Also, what I really like is if I start my project on here, I can take that over to my Final Cut on my MacBook, but I would not be able to bring it back from MacBook to iPad. One of the things that I like the most is, you know, I have a MacBook, I have an iPhone, and I am constantly airdropping things. You know, I was able to airdrop videos from my phone and just have them right Right here but also if you have your iCloud synced it is so easy to just grab those iCloud files those videos those pictures and toss them right into your timeline over here is where we have the jog wheel this jog wheel will become your best friend so you can click it you can you know obviously use everything with touch and we can actually edit it before we even put it into the timeline but what we can do here is we can kind of select this and right here with the uh, jog wheel we can scroll to where we want to start so say i want to start it here i can then hit this and it cuts it. So I then dropped it into the timeline and there we have it. So for this clip specifically, I definitely would want to make it a little bit bigger. Um, there was way too much of the car and this is where I'm gonna kind of fix the colors a little bit. I'm gonna drop the exposure a little bit. Um, I love a good contrast. Definitely don't need any brightness and definitely need some saturation. Highlights, we're gonna drop the highlights. So and then we can kind of see what it looks like with the enable button, you know, the before and after. This is all still very much learning for me, um, but I am enjoying it. Anyway guys, that's just kind of my first impressions of testing out Final Cut Pro, um, as well as kind of extensively using an iPad as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want me to cover or to make videos about. Uh, make sure you subscribe because we have a lot more content coming soon. I'll see you guys later. Bye.